What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Campaign Grind. I am Pedro Diaz, I am your host, and this is The Campaign Grind. Here we got our buddy, our host, Mr. Ray Valdez. What's going on, man? All right, good to see you. Good, how's everything? All right, all right. Are you are you ready for the for Christmas the holidays? The holiday season? Yes. Well, we have to wish a happy Merry Christmas to we have to wish your audience. We have to wish all our audience a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, Happy That's Holiday happy. Season. Be safe, guys. Thank you, guys, very much for tuning in to another episode of the Campaign Grind. Um, we have a pretty neat episode lined up for you guys today. Um, I know that previous episodes we've talked about some some uh, business stuff, some campaign stuff, some personal life stuff, um, but this one's actually a little more geared towards political campaigns. But before we dive right into the topics, um, I want to start off by basically telling you guys what I say in every single episode. This podcast is for everybody. We do not discriminate whether you're a politician, you're a candidate, you're an entrepreneur, you're a lawyer, you're a lot, whatever it is you are, we do not discriminate. This podcast is for you. Yes, this podcast or this episode of the Campaign Grind is geared more towards campaigns, but I guarantee that you're going to find different gold nuggets that you could utilize in your personal life. Like I tell everybody, everybody that walks through our door, everybody that wants us to help them out in their campaign, a campaign is run just like a business. Instead of selling a product or a service, we're actually selling a platform and we're selling a candidate. So we market our candidates the same way you would market your business or yourself. So I guarantee you're going to find some different gold nuggets in here that you could utilize for, for, your, for your professional life and even your personal life. So... We have three topics we're going to be talking about today, and these are pretty neat topics. The reason why is because they're kind of like ABC basics for campaigns, but there's really not a, a, nobody really talks about it. The reason why is because people think that it's a stupid question or it's something that doesn't really matter or anything like this. But these little ABC questions or these little ABC problems in campaigns are really big problems once they start snowballing. You know, they're small right now, but the more, the, the longer your campaign goes without addressing these issues, the bigger and bigger that problem gets. So the first topic that we're gonna be talking about and I like this one, is um, why your spouse should be 100% on board your campaign. So as many of you guys know, you know Mr. Ray Valdez over here has run for office in the past. Um, and I'm going to tell you guys from when I ran uh, um, back in 2009 as well. But before we go into that, I want to talk and ask Ray, you know, why he believes it's very important to have your spouse on board in your campaign 100% through the entire process. Well, that's a uh, good issue. Uh, you know, it is very important to, if you're a, a candidate or if you're going to be a candidate for office before you declare your candidacy, that you, uh, you know, check with your family, Absolutely. your wife and children and so on. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, running for office is a, a big time consuming issue. Uh, you want to make sure that everybody is, uh, understands uh, the uh, demands that you're going to have on your time, uh, especially your wife, your family, they expect you home for lunch or dinner or certain times. and. Uh, sometimes the campaign <coughs> intrudes into your ability to be home on time for uh, the holidays and things like that because you may be, you know, campaign. that might be a peak, a peak time for you to be campaigning or, you, you know, so, uh, a lot of times uh, the schedule for a lot of these uh, town hall meetings and, uh, and events and so on are running those days that uh, your family uh, would be accustomed to having you home. Yep. And you won't be able to do that as often. And uh, also because uh, when you are not a rich candidate or you don't have uh, a lot of money in your, in your, in your account uh, for this specifically, it can be a drain on family finances also. Yep. So it's not only the time consuming, uh, if you're running, if you have a business, and you have a family business or, you know, or a, a single owner, a small uh, mom and pop, as we call it, business, uh, this is a, this is, can be dangerous also because you're going to be taking a lot of time away 
from your ability to, to provide uh, finances for your family, uh, to dedicate it to serving the community. As a candidate, you're already serving the community because you're bringing a lot of issues to the table that otherwise Wouldn't may not be, be brought. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot, there's a number of things that, uh, that are important uh, to your family uh, as you become a candidate and maybe an elected official. Uh, depending upon the position that you're running for, that also might uh, uh, demand, have a traveling demand on your time. Yep. You might be out of town, you might have to do a lot of things. So this is very important that you have the family support. You know, a lot of times, not only, you know, your wife and children, but your, maybe your mother and father and Absolutely. all the family around you, because you're going to need a lot of, a lot of uh, support for working and a, a lot of support uh, uh, from your family, even with, uh, with if you have a lot of funds. Yeah, you know. absolutely. No, the, you actually brought up a, a really interesting point there regarding the campaigning during the holidays. Now, we are in the holiday season and a lot of candidates, and I'm telling you, I have a lot of candidates have actually said, well, a lot of people don't like being bothered or anything like that. Yeah, that may be true to a certain extent. But I'm a big fan of being persistent. I'm a big fan of saturation. And the holiday season, not only for business, for our business, for campaigns as well, that, that's when we like to thrive. That's when I thrive. The reason why is because everybody's focusing. And I was actually talking to Iris about this earlier this morning. It's everybody's focusing right now on the holiday season. Everybody's focusing on New Year's. And we're out there soliciting candidates, trying to reach out to candidates so they know who we are yes. and can also come in and, and hire us. So it's basically shooting fish in a barrel. It's open season for us because nobody yes. else is doing it because everybody else is focused on holiday season and New Year's. So when it comes to candidates and their campaign, I think it's the best way for them to go out and basically canvas and meet the, the, the voters, is especially during the holiday season. Some of them or most of them may not be here, but uh -huh. those that are here, you're going to have their undivided attention because mm -hmm. you will be the only candidate knocking on their door. You will be the only candidate calling them personally. So I'm glad you brought up the campaign during the holiday season. Um, but you as a candidate, absolutely. You need to have your spouse, you need to have your family involved in the campaign 100% because that is the backbone to any campaign. There's no way on earth you're going to be able to run for office and get elected or run a successful campaign and get elected if you don't have the support of your family. Um, and especially now during the holiday season. So I'm glad you brought that topic up. Number two, okay, the second topic we're going to be talking about today um, is basically... And I'm glad we're talking about this because we've reached out to candidates outside of Florida and they basically told us, well, I don't need your services. I don't need this. I don't need that. Mm -hmm. And once we talk to them, I actually try to get a little more details. Right? I like to know what we did wrong, what we could improve. So like that, once we come across somebody else, we already have improved on that point. And most of the candidates have said, well, you know, one, I don't have the money. And two, I actually YouTubed, you know, how to run a campaign. You know, yeah. I saw it on YouTube. Um, and honestly, you don't even know what our prices are. We haven't given them any prices, but they're already telling us that they can't afford us. You know, we're very affordable, we're very economical. We work with every campaign, but that's besides the point. I'm not trying to do a plug here. Number two, whatever you learn on YouTube, I guarantee is complete garbage. It's, it's whoever is putting that stuff on YouTube like that. You know, it's very different. The reason why, because whatever worked for them may not necessarily work for you. Every single campaign is different. So yeah. this is where this question basically derives from. It's what a consultant brings to the table. What do you think a consultant and a strategist brings to the table to any campaign? Well, and I don't want to plug. Don't plug no, me. I'm, not, I'm not going to plug you. Uh, uh, well, not exactly. Indirectly. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I would say that a consultant brings to the table the same as a steering wheel brings to the car. I like that. So I would say that, you know, without, you can go to Google, you can go to uh, your you junior too. college and take some uh, courses on campaigning and all this and so on. But the expertise, the experience, uh, I don't want to say of Diaz campaigns, but I would say it, uh, you know, of being involved, being there, learning, uh, you know, on the beat of the hammer, 
Yeah. And uh, being out there with uh, all the different demographics, being out there with all different kinds of candidates for mayor of the city, for a state representative, for judge, and all that, which I know you've run all kinds of different campaigns. Uh, that experience is invaluable. You can read up whatever you want, but uh, let me tell you, I speak from experience, and a lot of experience because I'm an old man. But the uh, fact is that uh, if you check, it doesn't cost you nothing to get two or three opinions, uh, maybe from your, from your local or your known uh, uh, consultants and so on. And any candidate who's run for office, most of them have used consultants. Absolutely. As a campaign manager and consultant. But the guy who really, to me, brings all the efforts together from the printer, from the, you know, the manager, the timely, all the, all the different things that are involved in the campaign is really the strategist, the, the consultant is the steering wheel to the car. I like that one. I, I like I like the way you put the steering wheel to the car. That's what a consultant is, um, and and I couldn't agree with you more. It's if a consult if if okay, let's rewind that. A consultant is is very important to any campaign because what you said they've been there, they've done that. They could tell you what's a waste of money and what works. Um, if your campaign or if you're running for a small town, a small village, you know there's not much money, there's not much. Uh, votes out there or anything like that. What I would encourage you to do is actually speak to the ones that have actually gotten elected in the past uh, mm -hmm. The ones the mayors the commissioners the councilmen, whatever um, And get an idea, you know, and, and you could kind of have them as a mentor You could have them as a, as a quote-unquote consultant to consult you on to as to what they did to get elected um, But I do believe that a consultant mm -hmm. is a vital part to any campaign because they've been there They've done that now if you don't have the funds or anything like that to, to hire a consultant, by all means, reach out to a consultant, reach out to us. Um, we've done thousands and thousands, and I mean thousands, and I'm not exaggerating, we've done thousands of meetings with candidates, and those candidates, some of them hired us, some of those have not hired us. But we meet with the candidates, you know, it's complimentary uh, uh, initial meeting. We let you guys know of exactly what the services that we bring to the table. We give you guys an idea of the demographics and somewhat of a, of a strategy and a timeline for your campaign. Um, but basically meet with the different consultants in your area, in your state, to get an idea of exactly what you're getting yourself into. Um, YouTube is not going to go into the details of the numbers, the absentee ballots, the early voting, the turnout, and whatnot. So, you know, talk to the elected officials that have actually gotten elected in your city, town, or village in the past. If there's no consultant in town, or if there is a consultant in town, meet with all of them. You know, don't don't commit to any of them if you don't have the money. But meet with them, see what they bring to the table, get the different ideas, and then do a little bit of research. You know, running for campaigns, I'm not telling you it, it, it's it's um, mm -hmm. it's it's difficult or it's it's scientific or it is kind of scientific. But you know, it, especially in those small races, you can kind of put the pieces together. But a consultant will save you a whole bunch of time and money, and basically frustration uh, along the way. Well, there's a lot of things that the consultant, just by meeting with a consultant, the candidate learns a lot of things. Uh, and the uh, fact uh, is, the fact is that, you know, the consultant will help you focus on the things that are going to get you elected. Yeah. The fact is, you know, that uh, as a candidate, uh, you know, we have our own idea. Uh, if you come from the ranks of uh, education or you come from the ranks of uh, working uh, in government or city or county government and so on uh, you have some ideas and so on but uh, like I myself uh, uh, you know thinking that you want to run for office and what you have to offer and uh, all the things that you are as an activist an advocate in the community you've done and so on that's all very good that's wonderful that's a good resume but it's not going to get you elected. Yep. Running a campaign, you need a strategist. You need, you got competition. You got other 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 uh, people who are going to be running for the same uh, position for the same elected office, and you're going to be competing. You got to fight. And the other thing is, 
bringing the reality into focus can only be done really with a consultant with the experience that that individual brings to the table and it's going to help you say look all of this is wonderful but when it goes through the funnel this is really what is going to help you get elected yeah and running for office being a candidate being a good candidate is wonderful but getting elected it's you know different thing. getting to the goal line that's a whole different game so Absolutely. my recommendation talk to the consultants yeah talk to the strategists even if you don't hire them you know a lot of them have complimentary meetings they have uh, evaluation meetings and stuff like that we offer it to all of our clients um, so and, and I'm glad you brought that up you know basically when you're running for office you're basically you know running on what you've seen in the past what you see on TV what you've seen you know driving from from the from from the from the from the farm store from getting your 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 stuff and, and purchases but the reality is that some of those things may not necessarily work you know for instance when I was running and also it's also an ego thing too believe it or not it's actually an, also an ego thing because I remember when I was running uh, back in 2009 I had hair and um, <laughs> and and I wanted to spend money on signs that had my face on it and um, so I bought a whole bunch of signs with my face on it and and then as you guys know, or as you will know, once you get further into your campaign process and you need to purchase your signs, the more colors your signs are, the more expensive they are. So um, we were paying for full color printed signs and that was coming out to be a ridiculous amount of money. And I think I spent most of my campaign budget on those signs because I wanted my signs to have my picture. Um, but yes, I did lose, I lost the election. And then, you know, trial and error, basically learning from my mistakes. And that's when I've come to realize that, you know, signs don't vote. and especially signs with your picture if you don't have the money you know don't spend it on signs with your picture don't spend it on big signs that are not necessary um i know a lot of candidates that have said well i want to fill up this entire wall with my signs and mm. i said okay that's great it's going to look cool but you know why why don't you just you know saturate different parts of the of the city or the town of the district mm -hmm. where you're running from so like that it's not only the people on this corner that see your sign Oh, I didn't think about that. Okay, that's fine. But then, you know, the reason they wanted to do that was because they lived a block away and that's the route they took to go home from work. So they wanted to see their sign, 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 sign. But in reality, they were just um, feeding their ego rather than trying to get more votes. So what will get you the votes? Like I said, you may think it's a sign. It's definitely not the signs because signs do not vote. Like I said in a previous episode, the day that signs grow legs, go to the precinct and vote, that's when I'll invest more money on those uh, on those sites. So focus on exactly what's going to get you elected. Um, so now the final topic that we're going to be talking about um, is the difference between a professional phone bank system and actually getting your personal cell phone or purchasing these pay by month cell phones and having people make those calls. Um, Ray, you as a former candidate, what are your thoughts on that? See, you know, my thoughts on that is uh, I'll let you handle it uh, <laughs> since you're the strategist, <laughs> you yeah. tell me. Uh, but, you know, uh, I know from experience that uh, a lot of people do that. Do what? They go and they go to, you know, to one of the oh, like cheap, pay by month cheap phones phone company country. or get some of these prepaid phones and uh, put X amount of dollars into them and then have your, you know, <coughs> phone people come in and hand out as many phones as, you know, you're going to have them making the phone calls and uh, let them do that, you know. Uh, I did that somewhat myself yeah. in the mm -hmm. past. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if that's the best operation or not, but I know other candidates that have used that same system yeah and uh you know to me that was the best i could see absolutely but i don't know what yeah. your opinion will be on that yeah no it, it all depends on the type of campaign that you're running it all depends on, on how much resources the campaign has um we have have created a, a or we have a system in place that we do for all of our clients because just as you when you were running you would have to print or your consultant would print or even yourself if you got the voter files from the elections department would print all the all the voters with their phone number and walk around with a stack of paper making the calls 
Um, and that's fine. You know, if there's no resources, that's what you got to do. But you got to you got to get it done. You got to make those calls. Um, we have a system in place that we help out the candidates with the phone banking. We do all these things in house. The reason why is because once we get involved in a campaign, we like having full control of the campaign and knowing what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and how it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the phone banking, we like to know where the positive uh, voters are, where the negative voters are, where the undecided voters are. Um, so we have a system. We do this. We have a professional system that we do the phone banking in-house. We used to do it that way, buying the, 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 the pay-by-month phones, getting people into the office, giving them a script, giving them the papers, and having them call. What ended up happening was that I was taking much more time inputting all that information because as you guys can see, you know, this is just my chicken scratch um, from the notes. So once you're making phone calls, you're making notes next to the person's name, you're writing positive, negative, undecided, and at the end of the day, this is what that call list would look like. So then I would actually come in and have somebody that would do data entry and input this information. So I was spending much more money having somebody get try to figure out this and decipher what in the world this phone banker wrote on their notes to input it into our, into our Excel spreadsheet so we know whether the voter was positive, negative, or undecided. So that's when we're like, okay, we need to put together a system and we have a professional system in place that it's all online. So automatically, once our phone bankers come in, they <coughs> log into their iPads, they, the, their cell phone starts ringing or the office phone starts ringing, then they're connected directly to the phone bank system. As soon as they're connected to the phone bank system, the, the, the voters information pops up so they know exactly who they're speaking to. And right there on their iPad, they're able to put support, opposed and undecided. Um, it is a little complicated, but it's a lot easier for us as a campaign, as a campaign consultant and a strategist to see that information real time rather than having to decipher what a volunteer or a campaign phone banker put on the, on the paper. Mm -hmm. But as I said, depending on what your campaign is doing and depending on the resources your campaign has, listen, there's no right or wrong way. At the end of the day, as long as you're making those calls, as long as you're canvassing and as long as you're able to touch the voters several times, that's what's going to get you elected. I see, uh, I see Iris here with, with her hand up. I, I think that we actually got a call. Yes. Um, so, Iris. Yes, Albert called in. Um, it's about the previous topic. He wanted to know, should I wait till I have an opponent to hire a consultant? Right. Albert called. Until you have an opponent right. to hire a consultant. Right. Well, <clears throat> whether you have a, a, an opponent or not, I don't think should make any difference <clears throat> in the... Uh, organization of your campaign and uh, in the, having a structure and the timely uh, you know decisions that have to be made during the campaign <clears throat> there is a lot of things that fall into place it's not just what you do but when you do it and to have someone that can guide you through all those steps believe me I don't care how much experience you have you need that support, just like we were talking about. You need your uh, marital support, your spouse support, you need whatever. You need to have someone that can work with you, that can strategize when the absentee ballots are coming out, yep. when you need to reach out to the voters, you know, with your mailings, when, you know, all the different things that you have to do. And unless you have the experience, you have the the capacity unless you have maybe 20 or 30 people working for you that are going to do all these different uh, tie all these ends together yeah and you're going to have a group doing this and another group doing that and so on if you don't have that yeah don't try it because you're not going to get elected i agree you know and uh you know one thing about having an opponent is it's important to have an opponent because when you get elected and you have two or three candidates running and you and you have opposition, what happens is if you get elected, you have a mandate. The people chose you over the other two or three. Yeah. That means that the people chose you because of the, what they expect from you once you are the person who represents them up there on that dais. So, you know, it is very important that you have an opponent. So to me, you know, that's that's very good. And also it's challenging. Yeah. If you have the challenge of an opponent, 
you know, then then you look at uh, yourself and you can also, you know, maybe say, wow, I need to get elected because I can make the difference that my opponent is not going to make. Yep. So, you know, this is a big issue to me. Yep. Albert, Albert, I think that if, if you're running for office, I think the first person you should get even before you file your paperwork is a consultant or a strategist uh, for two reasons. The re number one is because, as Ray said, they'll be able to put together that structure, those bones to your campaign, that basically that path to victory that you know you may or you will need if you do get an opponent. Um, and then two, if you get a really good consultant or strategist that's very well known in the industry or very well known in the area, um, they can actually deter people from running against you. So opposed to having five people in an open seat, you know, you Albert, you have a consultant that's very well known, very well respected. He may be able to push some people out. So instead of having a five person race, you're going to be having a two or three person race. Um, so I think that before you even file your paperwork, you should meet with the consultants, see what they say, um, because that's valuable information. Um, and all the different steps that go into a campaign is so important to really have a, a strategy, to have a real working plan, not your plan, not your emotional plan, well, I can get elected because I know a lot of people in my community, they all know that I am a super nice person, that I've been serving the community for so long and so on. None of that. It, what it, really, the, uh, where's the beef? Well, the yeah. beef is where the money is. Yep. How can you get out there and how many donations are you going to be able, how much money are you going to be able to raise for your campaign? You know, uh, the timely filings, the timely everything, your treasury, yep. your funds, how you're directing those funds, you know, where are you going to put your money? You know, that's you gotta going put to your be money, most effective. You got to put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> where, where is your money going to go that is most effective in getting you elected? Yeah. You know, and so on and so forth. There's so many things, the media, the media time. Uh, oh. You know, so you need you need really professional consideration yep. Albert, into your campaign. I, ho I hope we answered your question, Albert. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, give us a call, 305-860-1010, 305-860-1010, or shoot me a, an email, pedro at dscampaigns.com. Guys, we are getting towards the tail end of this show. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. As always, uh, thank you guys. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. This episode of the Campaign Grind was brought to you by uh, Global Compass Real Estate. For all of your real estate needs, give them a call, 786-326-8885. Global Compass Real Estate, 786-326-8885. Ray, thank you very much for... Thank you for having me again. Thanks for, for coming pleasure. by. Guys, once again, thank you very much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Campaign Grind. If you have any questions whatsoever, please give us a call, 305-860-1010, 305-860-1010. Shoot me an email, pedro at diazcampaigns.com. Please feel free to share this with your friends, your family, your coworkers. I guarantee they're going to find some information. Guys, I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. I am Pedro Diaz, signing out.